Good day, everyone. My name is Patience Vince Yakubo from the Department of English, and we're taking this course GST 111 Communication in English 1. The topics I'm taking for the first semester are parts of speech and sentence construction. On the part of speech, we'll look at the eight English parts of speech the noun, pronoun, adjective, verb, adverb, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. interjections. The sentence, we'll look at the sentence structure, type of sentences, sentences according to structure, and sentences according to functions. Parts of speech. Words are classified into classes. There are nine parts of speech in the English grammar. We'll be looking at the eight major ones the noun, pronoun, verb, adverb, adjective, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. This part of speech indicate how the words function within the sentence. An individual word may function as more than one part of speech when used in viral sentences. So depending on the context of usage of a word, a word can function in different classes. Here are the eight parts of speech in English grammar which I've mentioned earlier that we'll be looking at in this course. Noun, pronoun, verb, adverb, adjective, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. Noun. A noun is a name of a place, person, thing, animal, or idea. Everything which has a name and we talk about it is a noun. Everything is represented by a word that is called a noun. Some of the examples of noun are written below. Places. We have school, palace, villages, cafe, persons, man, woman, Joanna, lady, things, cup, pencil, book, animals, cats, lion, goat, cow, chicken, etc. Ideas happiness, democracy, education, truth, types of noun. There are many types of noun depending upon some aspects. One noun may fall in multiple categories. A common noun may be a countable noun and at the same time that noun may be a concrete noun. Example, pencil is a common noun. It is countable, concrete as well as singular noun. Some main types of noun are as follows. We have the proper noun, the common noun, concrete noun, abstract noun, collective noun, uncountable noun, gender specific nouns. The pronoun. Pronoun is defined as a word that replaces a noun in a sentence. It is used instead of a noun. It takes place of a noun. Exam look at the sentence. Sam is a boy of 16. Sam is studying accounting in the university. Sam has two sisters. Sam loves playing football. Sam is captain of his team. So when we use the pronoun, the repetition of the name Sam looks monotonous in every sentence due to repetition of the noun Sam. Sam can be replaced by pronoun to make a sentence beautiful and easy to avoid word redundancy. So let's take this sentence again. Sam is a boy of 16. He is studying accounting in the university. He has two sisters. He loves playing football and he is captain of his team. Types of pronoun. Pronoun are categorized into many types. Main types include personal pronoun, possessive pronoun, indefinite pronoun, reflective pronoun, intensive pronoun, demonstrative pronoun, interrogative pronoun, and reflexive pronoun. We will consider some of them, not all of them. Personal pronouns. This is pronoun. This pronoun mentions persons or things without naming them. Example, I, it, me, mine, you, etc. It is divided into three grammatical persons. We have first person personal pronoun, example, my, me, us, we, 
us my me are singular us we and us are plural plural second person personal pronoun the second person personal pronoun is you and your the third person personal pronoun example him he she ha it they when we talk about personal pronoun the grammatical persons the first person second person and the third person the first person is a person speaking the second person is the person being spoken to the third person is the person or thing being spoken about first person person speaking second person person being spoken to third person person being spoken about possessive pronouns possessive pronouns are the pronouns that show ownership and possession in a sentence we have the demonstrative pronouns demonstrative pronouns are nouns that take place of an are pro, pronouns that take place of a noun that's already been mentioned in a sentence demonstrative pronouns can be singular or plural five main demonstrative pronouns are these these t-h-e-s-e -E, those t-h-o-s-e such s-u-c-h these t-h-i-s and that t-h-a-t these and these t-h-i-s are used when objects or things are closer to a person those and that are used when objects or things are further away from a person these t-h-e-s is the singular form while t-h-i-s is the plural uh, t-h-e-s is the plural form while t-h-i-s is the singular form t-h-a-t is the singular form while t-h-o-s-e is the plural form we also have interrogative pronouns an interrogative pronoun is specifically used to ask questions from the word interrogation these pronouns are special because they all start with wh which is quite easy to remember most commonly used interrogative pronouns are whose what whom which and who the verb the verb is described as a saying being doing having or thinking word a verb shows the happening or state of something example the children were playing in the backyard the activity the children are involved in is an example of a verb there are many types of verb and they include linking verbs transitive verbs intransitive verbs reflexive verbs auxiliary verbs and modal verbs let's look at some of them auxiliary verbs auxiliary verbs help the main verb in a sentence and are called helping verbs auxiliary verbs when used with ordinary verbs help in changing the tenses mood or voice of a sentence they also help in making negatives and interrogatives of sentences auxiliary verbs are also simply called auxiliaries common words that come under this category are as follows is am are was were have do etc adverb an adverb is a word that modifies a verb an adjective or another adverb it provides us with further information about a verb an adjective or another adverb it tells us in which manner at what place or what time something happened or is done kinds of adverbs adverbs are categorized into many kinds such as adverbs of time adverbs of place adverbs of frequency adverbs of degree adverbs of manner adverbs of reason relative adverbs interrogative adverbs adverbs of affirmation and negation degrees of adverbs like adjectives adverbs also have degrees of comparison but only adverbs of time 
degree and manner admit to the comparison adverbs like now then there once etc cannot be compared because of their nature adjective an adjective is defined as a word which gives information about a noun pronoun or a noun phrase it gives additional information about a noun or pronoun it shows the quality kind or degree of a noun look at the examples below we'll take more there are many examples which will be in your notes kinds of adjectives adjectives are categorized into many kinds such as adjectives of quality adjectives of quantity numeral adjectives or number adjectives demonstrative adjectives possessive adjectives and interrogative adjectives preposition prepositions are words that we put before nouns or pronouns this denotes in what relation the person or thing indicated by it exists in relation to something else look at the examples below the child jumped off the bed there is a bee in the jar honey is fond of cheesecakes off off is a preposition in in is a preposition conjunction conjunctions are simply words that join sentences clauses and sometimes words this join together sentence sentences are to make them more compact unlike relative adverbs and relative pronouns conjunctions just simply join and perform no other job We'll get a lot of examples of conjunction in the notes kinds of conjunctions there are two types of conjunctions we have the correlative conjunctions and compound conjunctions correlative conjunctions there are some conjunctions we which are used as pairs these types of conjunctions are called correlative conjunctions or just correlatives common correlative conjunctions are as follows either or neither nor both and though yet whether or not only but also these are correlative conjunctions because they are used together compound conjunctions many compound expressions are also used as conjunctions these compound expressions are called compound conjunctions common words that con come under the category of compound conjunctions are as follows in order that you will discover that they are already group of words as if as soon as as well as in as much as provided that even if it is these are examples of compound conjunctions the classes of conjunctions conjunctions are divided into two classes we have coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions coordinating conjunctions the word coordinating means of equal rank the conjunctions which join together two sentences or clauses or equal rank or significance are known as coordinating conjunctions they connect two independent clauses together the main coordinating conjunctions are as follows and but for no or also neither no neither no either or subordinating conjunctions the conjunctions we join together an independent clause or to a dependent clause are called subordinating conjunctions the main subordinating conjunctions are after before because if till as that do although unless etc when we talk about coordinating conjunction we said whatever we join are of the same rank so we join them together but subordinating conjunctions here we have the other one is an independent clause it can stand on its own and we'll just add something else that cannot stand on its own we have examples in the notes 
interjections interjections are the words or group of words that are used to express and exclaim extreme emotions these words are always used with an exclamation mark interjections do not have any grammatical function in a sentence the words that are commonly used as interjections are as follows hooray hooray at last oh no oh my god what because of the emotion you express yourself and it comes with excitement most times it also comes with an expression of shock all right let's look at the sentence construction a sentence consists of clauses when we talk about a clause in english grammar we have the verb and a noun a noun which usually stands as a subject it could be a person a place or thing remember our definition of nouns at the beginning and then a verb is an action or state or an occurrence so in a sentence we have a verb and a noun a verb is very very important in the sentence it tells us whatever a person or a thing is doing or the action or the state of that thing the structure the noun and verb in a clause must match what we mean is that a plural noun should have a plural verb etc in other words multiple nouns and multiple verbs there are two types of clauses we have the independent clause and dependent clause independent clauses an independent clause stands on its own as a complete sentence in other words independent clauses have the noun dependent clauses on the other hand must be paired with an independent clause in order to create a complete sense it does not have the noun dependent clause on its own is a fragmented sentence that is why it is called dependent it needs something to lean on to make it stand that is an incomplete sentence different types of sentences there are four different types of sentences each type has a corresponding correct end punctuation imperative sentences this gives a common a command or makes a request it can sound authoritative usually there is a full stop and sometimes an exclamation mark point for emphasis interrogative sentences that imperative sentences make statements it also gives command interrogative sentences this asks a question and always uses a question mark exclamation exclamatory sentences this expresses high emotion and always uses an exclamation mark we have the simple sentences simple sentences are the most basic they are made up of only three independent clause there are no commas separating any compound elements in simple sentences it is simple it is straightforward these are sentences according to function we looked at sentences according to structure The sentences according to function are imperative sentence, interrogative sentence, exclamatory sentence. According to function structure now, we have the simple sentence. The complex sentence as number two. A complex sentence is made up of a dependent clause joined to an independent clause. It is an incomplete sentence combined with a complete sentence, which creates the complexity. The dependent clause can either be essential or non-essential to the meaning of the sentence. Compound sentences. Compound sentences are made up of two independent clauses joined together by coordinating conjunctions. Example, and, but, or, yet, etc. Conjunctive adverbs such as therefore, however, or a semicolon compound complex sentences 
a sentence is said to be compound complex when it contains two independent clauses. There are also that are also joined to one or more dependent clauses. So we have two independent sentences that can stand on their own, and then sentences that cannot stand on their own are joined together to make one whole sentence. These sentences are essentially compound sentences with at least one dependent clause added on.